Um, today we're doing the first lesson in Chapter 5, which is Angles in Standard Position in Quadrant 1. Um, if you haven't gone and done the Get Ready assignment yet um, for this chapter, please go and do that now um, as a little warm-up, um, because you'll need the skills in that assignment to um, do the things in this chapter. Okay, um, we are going to skip this first section here and move straight into the construct your understanding um, and just get used to drawing angles um, using a coordinate grid. So um, what we're going to be doing in this unit is using the x and y axis to kind of center um, an angle when we draw it. So just as a quick reminder here, the x axis is the horizontal one and the y axis is the vertical one. And when we draw an angle in this chapter, we're going to use the origin as kind of the starting point for our angle, and then we'll draw a line segment outwards from there. And the angle will be um, from the positive x-axis. We'll measure it from there. And the larger the opening, the larger the measure of the angle. The other thing um, that we will be using as a common symbol for the measurement of an unknown angle um, is this Greek letter theta. So it looks like an O with kind of a line through it. Um, in words, that's called theta. It's a Greek letter, and it's typically used for an angle measurement that isn't known. Okay, so let's say we draw um, an angle just like this, and we have our, our angle theta there. A um, couple of things we're going to label on this grid. Okay, so we have this point here, and the point would have coordinates x, y. Those would be some numbers. Um, so we actually have a right triangle here. If I extend this line down, there's a right angle right there. And this distance here would be the Y value, however high up that point is. And this horizontal distance here would be X. Um, okay, so if I was going to, let's do the same thing ask here. It says right R, so R here is the hypotenuse. Sometimes we call it the radius, or it's also the distance from the point to the origin. So it's going to be um, using the Pythagorean theorem, we take the square root of A squared plus B squared. In this case, the two legs would be X and Y. So it'd be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So you can get the radius that way. And then it says write the value of theta in terms of X and Y. So um, here's where we're going to use our primary trig ratios. If I'm looking at that angle, say, uh, I'm just going to use red to the label here. See the hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle. This would be the opposite. And this would be the adjacent side. So if I wanted to write angle theta in terms of y and x, these are the opposite and adjacent sides. So using SOHCAHTOA, which I'll write over here, I want to use the tangent ratio to do this because I want to be using the opposite and adjacent sides. So tan of angle theta is the opposite, so y over the adjacent, which is x. And if I actually wanted to solve for theta, I would use tan minus 1 button, the um, inverse tan button, of y over x. Okay. Um, then it says write the x coordinate of p in terms of the sun. Uh, we're concerned with r and x and theta, so we have the adjacent and hypotenuse sides. So I'd want to use um, the cosine ratio. So cos theta would be x over r. If I wanted to solve for x, I would do r times cos theta. And finally, it's saying write the y coordinate in terms of r and theta. So the y coordinate is the opposite side. And if we're writing it in terms of r, we're using the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, I'd want to use the sine ratio. So sine of theta is y over r. Rearranging that, we get r times sine theta. If you need a review of the three primary trig ratios, um, go back to the get ready assignment. Um, 
But there you have it. That's kind of how you draw an angle. And we call this standard position, which we'll go over in a second. But we draw our angles in this chapter on a coordinate grid um, so that they're all drawn in the same direction in the same way. And then we can label them with X and Y. OK, so let's go to a couple of um, definitions here or keywords just at the bottom of this page. Um, we're going to have coordinates or draw it on the coordinate grid, as I mentioned. And when we do this, we call this drawing an angle in standard position. Um, so in this arm here of our angle, the line segment that you draw is called the terminal arm. Okay, and this point that we labeled earlier is called the terminal point. And we always measure from the positive x-axis. And the larger the opening, the larger the angle, the larger the value of theta. OK. Um, so this would be considered 0 degrees at the x-axis. And then the y would be 90 degrees. If you went all the way to y, you'd have a corner, um, which is a 90 degree angle. OK, great. In this section, we are only going to be concerned with the angles in this first coordinate uh, or this first quadrant where X and Y are positive. But in the next section, we'll look at angles that are in the other three quadrants as well, where X and Y can be negative values. OK, let's go to the first. Check your understanding. Um, I'll be doing all of this. Um, OK, so the basic idea here is we want to be able to draw angles and then calculate um, either the sides or the angle itself. OK. So it says the point 3, 4, so this is the x-coordinate of the point and the y-coordinate, is on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. Determine the distance r from the origin to p. So I always recommend that you draw your, um, I always recommend that you draw your angles out no matter what, even if the question doesn't ask you for that. Um, you should be drawing your angles. So I have a coordinate axis here. Here's y, here's x, and we're going to draw this point 3, comma 4. So you don't need to be super accurate with the labels. You can just label the, this is 3, 4. If you want, you could put 3 here, 4 here. OK. Um, and then this would be the angle say, that they're talking about. Okay, so it says determine the distance r from the origin to point p. So this value here, this length here would be r. And we already did one practice version of this. So we'd use the Pythagorean theorem. r would be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Um, and then would be exactly 5. Um, sometimes R is going to be an approximate value, and sometimes it's going to be an exact value, depending on what um, what the point is. In this case, 3 squared plus 4 squared, when you square root, it's exactly 5. Okay, and then determine the primary trig ratios of theta. I'm going to draw this triangle out. So here's theta. Here's R equals 5. This is Y equals 4. This is X equals 3. So I'm just going to label these the first time through just to kind of remind us of all the how we label. The longest side is always the hypotenuse. The opposite side is across from the angle. And the adjacent side is going to be the one right next to the angle, A2, ADJ, sometimes for short. OK, so the primary trig ratios, they're asking for sine, cos, and tan. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you want, you can do write down Sokotoa to help you remind yourself of that. Uh, so that would be 4 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 3 over 5. And tangent is um, opposite over adjacent. So that would be 4 over 3. OK, so those are the three primary trig ratios, sine, cos, and tangent. Um, and then finally, it says determine the measure of angle theta to the nearest degree. So I'll do that right here. You could actually use any of the three ratios to do this. I'll just do the first one I wrote down. And you would just do the um, inverse of that. So I'd go sine, 
to minus one, it'll look like that on your calculator and you would type four divided by five. So this is gonna be an approximate value. I'm gonna get a decimal. And it's, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. You will get something that's like 53.13010235. So I'm gonna round it off. I think it says in the question what to round it to. Yeah, the nearest degree. So 53 degrees. And I'm gonna put a little dot on top of my equal sign to indicate that that is an approximate value that that's rounded off. Um, and again, I could have used cosine or tangent um, to calculate that. You would have got 53 degrees no matter which ratio you use there. Okay, so um, that's just a little lesson on how to draw an angle if you've given a point. Um, now we're gonna go to example two, which is like a little word problem here. Um, the word problem um, has to do with directions. Um, this is a useful skill because, or this is, a, I guess, in um, when you're talking about directions, you have four, right? North, south, east, and west, and they always look like this. I like to remember never eat soggy wieners going clockwise, and then that's an easy way to remember how to draw them. Um, when you're given a direction like this, west 30 degrees south, what that means is you point west and then you go 30 degrees in the southern direction from there. So west 40 degrees north would mean you're pointing directly west and then you go 40 degrees towards the north from there. So let's, knowing that now, let's go to our question here. It says a forest ranger sees smoke rising from a point that lies in the direction east 40 degrees north. So I'm gonna draw a little coordinate grid. So east 40 degrees north, let's label our directions first of all. So never eat soggy wieners. East 40 degrees north. So I'm going to go straight east and then go 40 degrees from there towards north. So that's how you would draw that. And she estimates that the distance from the ranger station is about 30 kilometers. So here's the station, here's the fire. And this is 30 kilometers, according to this ranger. Um, the firefighters at the ranger station have to travel east and then north to get to the fire to the nearest kilometer. How far should they travel? So they're going to go in this direction first. I'll call that X just because it's along the X axis. And then they're going to go this direction. Um, and I'll call that Y just because it's along it's the distance Y here. Okay. So we have to calculate X and then we'll calculate Y. So when I'm calculating X, I'm gonna use the, just gonna label my triangle here. So this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. So for X, I'm gonna use the cosine ratio. So cosine of 40 degrees, so we have the angle this time, equals X over 30. So X would be 30 times cosine of 40 degrees, which is approximately, it's gonna be an approximate answer. 22, I'll write out a few decimal places, just 981, just so I don't make a rounding error later on. Okay, and then let's calculate Y. So uh, this time we would use sine, 40 degrees is Y over 30. So Y would be 30 times cosine, it's not the cosine, sine, of 40 degrees. Oops, there we go. So that would be approximately 19.2836 kilometers. Now, um, notice I'm using the dots on top of my equal sign because those are approximate. So, um, the, and then it says round to the nearest kilometer. So you would go, so the final answer is you would go 23 kilometers east and then about 20, 19 kilometers north to get to the fire. Um, they can't, it, yeah, they can't go straight there. So they go east and then north. Okay, 
um, and that's all for today. The main idea is that we're just working in this first quadrant and getting used to drawing angles given a certain point in that quadrant. I'm going to stop the lesson.